What's up, everybody? Happy Sunday. I want to welcome everybody who's watching today, but more specifically, I want to welcome the dads that are out there right now. Today's Father's Day. Happy so Happy Father's Day. Happy Father's Day to you. Nick, you're a dad. I'm a dad of two kids. That's right. I'm a dad of two kids, so happy Father's, happy Father's Day, Day to you. Man, man I have, congratulations. Thank you. Hey, listen, we could start the service like we always do, or, or hear me out, we could start the service with what all dads ever like, which is highlight, highlight reels. Highlight reels. But not just any highlight reels. These are dad save highlight reels. Dad save we know highlight you guys reels. Got what it takes. So here's what I'm going to invite you to do, dads. Grab whatever you want to eat right now. Your favorite candy. Crack open a cold one. Of Lacroix. Of Lacroix. That's right, because it's church. And let's get into some of these dad highlight reels. First video. All right. We, what do we got here, man? Basic scene. Everybody's seen it. Oh, oh my goodness. See the coddle. <laughs> You're safe, son. You're safe. You're here. You're going to college one day. You will go to college. You will have a girlfriend one day. <laughs> it's, it's. Have you been there? Uh, uh, yeah, I've been there. I've been there. Yeah. Man, nothing is scarier than seeing your kid, but this dad, like, slid knees in. Knees in. Straight to the, the, the nurture. The hands were in the right place. <laughs> nurture and Brought nature into the chest. all Brought together. Into the chest. Straight in, just like Ear all the kids to, training. Ear to the chest. <laughs> To the it you was can like, hear my heartbeat. you can hear my heartbeat. You will live. You, you will, will live. live. Okay, here's number two. Beautiful day out on the lake. Recreational, out with the family. Kid wants. Whoa! whoa, whoa. whoa. <laughs> <laughs> if you missed it, it's quick. That was quick. Just was like every quick. kid catch is. Yep. Uh, let's bring it back for replay slow mo. Yeah, I mean, you know, the kid, they're just enjoying the day out on the lake, and, you know, kid leans a little too far forward. He but wants to see, he wants to what? get a closer look. <laughs> you never lose. You never lose. Not with dad. You know what? It's always a learning Listen, experience. Listen, when your life is upside down, dad makes it right side up. <laughs> that's the way I that's the way I see it. Yes. With a few flips in between. Some could say this is, you know, walking on water. I don't know. I, I think you know, it was. It was the jury's though. out. Yep. The jury's out on it. Thank All I know you. is uh, these dads are awesome. This next clip is the ultimate local. You know a hero. Right here, folks. Right here, Nick, man. walk Let's us through the clip. Okay, so in this video, you know, it's what time of the year is it again? It was for an event. Christmas time. Okay. The sled hill is out. The sled hill's out, and I think we just got, you know, I'm just taking Cruz down this hill, and all of a sudden we turn sideways. Ooh. He just goes off. He, he runs. He, He's he trying to off. find it. His but look at your instincts. Aiming for the ground, and I managed to grab his sweater, not even his <laughs> body, his sweater. <laughs> And I pull him. Boom. As we're moving still. That was like a Lion King <laughs> father moment. Simba. <laughs> <laughs> so I grabbed him, and luckily uh, he cried a couple minutes afterwards. But no blood. No blood. No, no concussion. Blood, no blood on the snow. Just razor sharp. Can we just ice. bring it back real quick to that that snatch and grab moment right look, there? It's it, just it, like he just, he bounced off of something. And See his confidence in you, bro. <laughs> look at the the working of your abs. <laughs> In this, I'm just thinking of that. Look at Underneath that. Underneath the dad body, uh, everyone has abs. Uh, Cruz didn't know he was gonna get the best he ride. Didn't, he didn't know. He didn't know. Listen, guys, those are dad saves, dad highlights, and we pulled a hundred dads for this next segment. A hundred dads for this next segment. You dads voted, and we answered. And so our yes, worship team has put together a song yeah. to appreciate you dads, and you. it's in the form of a country song. <laughs> kind of country. Kind of country. But we're going to go for it. Here we go. He doesn't fight crime or wear a cape. He doesn't read minds or levitate. But every time my world needs saving, he's my Superman. Some folks don't believe in heroes, cause they haven't met my dad. He loves his workshop and rock and roll. Hot ride and hard gold. You could say he's a man of few words, but he talks a lot within. And even though I'm a little taller, I still look up to him. He built me a house in the arms of a tree. He 
I love our worship team. Even if they're going to go country music, hey, you know what? If it's for the dads. I, I feel blessed after that. <laughs> Nick, tell us what's happening around the church. So throughout this week and throughout this month, we've been seeing all kinds of different awesome things mm -hmm. happening on our campus. Every single week, uh, we've been having, we've been doing food drop-offs every single week. Yep. Uh, for the student ministry, we've had Students United, which is on Wednesdays and Saturdays, and that's a full-on YouTube experience of service, of games, of interactive things that we've been seeing happen every single week. And you know, that's been pairing really well as we've been piloting Neighborhood Church because they're actually using that Kids United content mm -hmm. at the Neighborhood Church, which is super cool. So there's so many good things happening throughout the week and we want you to be involved. So if that's you, if you feel inclined and want to get out and make an impact in the community and be the church, all you got to do is text be the church to 670 Seven, six, or if you want, you can email be the church at torypines.church. That's right. Uh, now, listen, all of this stuff that's been happening, the partnerships with community organizations, distributing food to neighbors, the neighborhood church effort, all of that is happening because of our collective generosity. So I want to say thank you first and foremost for continuing to support the mission of the church and actually giving through the church to all these great efforts. I want to invite you right now to actually partake with us, something Nick and his family do, me and my family do, and it's really simple. All you have to do is text GENEROSITY to 67076 and follow the prompts right from your phone. The other thing you can do is through the app, you can actually click on GIVE and you can just follow the prompts straight there and it'll walk you right through the process. Uh, for so many of the ministry that we're experiencing right now, it is absolutely because of your generosity. I just want to say thank you on behalf of the church and on behalf of all the people who are experiencing so much goodness in a season of so much uncertainty. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Well, uh, for those of you watching and have been with us for the past couple weeks, we are on week two of our Faith Forward series. And uh, we're going to be going through the book of James, continuing through that. And today for our contemporary services, we're going to have Pastor Mingo in the house. He's going to be doing our messages for the contemporary services. And then for our traditional service, we have Dr. Tim Scott yes. in the house. Another so great dad. Today's going to be a, oh, he is a great dad. Yeah. It's going to be a great Father dad. Father of We're seven. Here. Father of seven? Yeah. Let's go. <laughs> I've got a lot of work to do. Anyways, we will see you soon. Let's get to the message. Oh. 
of all the roles somebody can fill in this world, I really do believe that fatherhood is such an important one. And I hope all of you dads know it too. No matter the age of your kiddos, whether it's four or 40, your attention has value, your presence is meaningful, your involvement matters, and your love actually shapes the kids that God's entrusted to you. I also want to acknowledge the single moms in our community who are playing both the role of mom and dad in this season. I want you to know that I believe in you, we believe in you, uh, we love you, I see you as strong, and we are here for you as a church. And then finally, uh, for those of us who don't have the ability to call or see our dads today, I'm praying Hosea 14.3 over you, which reminds us that in God, the fatherless find compassion. Today, we're jumping into week two of our new series, Faith Forward, which is all about the book of James. And as we learned last week, we believe that the author is James, the half-brother of Jesus, who's also the leader in the early church. He's one of the leaders in the early church. And this, put, this book puts out this strong call to live out our faith. It's not a letter about head knowledge, uh, but it's a letter about action. It's a letter about uh, putting our faith in our life into forward motion. It was written in a time when uh, believers in Jesus were experiencing chaos as a community. They were scattered because of persecution, and they, maybe like us, were growing weary of a lack of normal life. They're living in a constant burden of not knowing what was next and needing consistent reminders that God was with them like he's with us. James reminds his readers that we all have this great strength in faith that we develop within. So today's talk uh, is going to be specifically focused on a faith that helps us resist temptation. So let's go ahead. Let's jump in if you've got your Bible or maybe open up the app and let's read chapter 1 verse 13 together. It says, Let no one say when he's tempted, I'm being tempted by God, for God cannot be tempted with evil, and he himself tempts no one. But each person is tempted when he is lured and enticed by his own desires. Then desire when it has conceived gives birth to sin, and sin when it is fully grown brings forth death. Do not be deceived, my brothers, my beloved brothers. Every good gift and every perfect gift is from above, coming down from the Father of lights, with whom there is no variation or shadow due to change. Of his own will, he brought us forth by the word of truth, that we should be a kind of first fruits of his creatures. I think when reading this, it's fair to say that temptation is something that everyone deals with. It's just not something that everyone wants to talk about. It's a fight. And when we lose that fight, it can turn into shame super quickly. But I love what 1 John 5, 4 and 5 reminds us of that everyone who is a child of God can overcome sin in this world. What wins the victory is our faith. No one can defeat the world's ways without having faith in Jesus as the Son of God. What wins is our faith. So how do we work our faith to be ready when we face temptation? I think James gives us three great keys to resisting temptation in everyday life and how our understanding of God actually gives us the win. If you're taking notes on the app, which again, I recommend you do, uh, here's our first filling. James invites us to resist temptation by taking responsibility for and paying attention to what's inside of me, right? Taking responsibility for and paying attention to What's inside of me? What's inside of you? James calls everybody out all at once to this same level of wokeness to understand that the origins of sin, which lead to death, aren't somewhere out there. He actually declares boldly that God is not to blame for temptation or the sin that comes from it, which is really easy to do when we feel overwhelmed and we actually forget that God is pure goodness that he's more for you than anyone or anything in this world. James isn't even going to give me or you the out of blaming the devil in this verse. In fact, according to the passage, blaming is something that we do that's out there for our temptation of sin that's in here. It's actually scapegoating the real issue. Let's take a look at verses 13 and 14 again and look and see what it says. 
Let no one say when he is tempted, I'm being tempted by God. For God cannot be tempted with evil, and he himself tempts no one. But each person is tempted when he is lured and enticed by his own desire. And here's another truth while we're talking about it. Our own human nature loves to shift blame. We want to find someone or something to blame to get us off the hook or to give ourselves a reason to justify what we're doing or feeling. See, when we're fatigued, when we're down, when we're distracted or depressed, we want to cope. We want something that's going to satisfy. And oftentimes, the worst of what's inside of us loves to make an appearance and give really crappy advice when it does. See, we all cope differently. Some of us by overeating, some of us by excessively drinking, maybe it's overspending. Some of us uh, disconnect emotionally when we get really tired. Others overreact physically. For some, it's neglecting reality by binging TV or getting lost in your phone. Uh, it can be unhealthy connections to other people. It could be something as simple as just laying in bed all day and slipping into those unhealthy, unhealthy mental places that we know don't do us any good. And while blame is an easy out, James reminds us that the road that leads to our, desi- our demise is most often built into every single one of us. Verse 14 says it clear as day. It says, but each person is tempted when they are dragged away by their own evil desires and enticed. It's a progression, and I hope you see it, that an idea is conceived, and then we are lured and enticed, and typically it's mentally. Even if there are external factors, it's what plays out in our minds that really does the heavy lifting. And then we act, which is the sin itself. Then we know that sin without a Savior will actually lead to spiritual death. Can you think of a time when you last enticed yourself? when you sponsored your own worst idea? For me, I know exactly one spot where it is. See, the Vons by my house makes everybody wait in line to check out right down the ice cream aisle. It's totally evil, 100% their fault. So when I go, I actually entice myself. I think of how much I love ice cream. I justify why we need another carton, even though I know there are two at the house already. And because I don't wanna not eat ice cream, I take enticement to the next level and I birth by buying another carton of either Moose Tracks or Mint Chip or Cherry Garcia or whatever. I think about ice cream. I read every flavor known to man while I wait to buy eggs. And then I reach in and buy what I know I don't need. I don't feel great and so I just justify and I cope and I add to my stash of ice cream. See how that works? The next thing I know, I'm literally in my sweats by myself, halfway through the carton, watching America's Got Talent and crying when somebody hits the golden buzzer. It goes downhill so fast. And you know what I feel like afterwards? I feel like a million bucks. No, of course you don't. I wish I ate carrots and broccoli instead, but that's what temptation does. It presents a false future of what you hope to get or do or feel, but all with the wrong approach the wrong motive or the wrong method. And you end up worse than when you began. James writes, each person is tempted when they are dragged away by their own evil desire and enticed. Then after that desire is conceived, it gives birth to sin. And sin, when it's fully grown, gives birth to death. Spiritual in some cases, physical in others. There's this old saying, when we know better, we can do better. So let's take time and take inventory. What tempts you? What are your experiences when temptation shows up? Where is it and when is it? Are there patterns that you can identify that you'd be willing to work through? I think a maturity of faith is willing to walk that road and faith helps win in Jesus' name. Romans 12, 2 is a verse you hear all the time around church and Jesus people. It says, Do not conform to the pattern of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Then you'll be able to test and approve what God's will is, His good, pleasing, and perfect will. This battle is always beginning in the mind. So how do we renew our mind? It's taking our current way of thinking, I think, and applying the teachings of Jesus to the way we think. It's asking God, 
How are you leading me through my current ways of thinking, my current ideologies? And Paul, who wrote this charge to the Romans, he knows the importance of challenging the way we think because the way we think determines the way we act. And the way we act determines the course of our lives. So, what does it look like to take responsibility for what we see that's actually inside of us and ask God to help reveal the things that we can't see yet? Number two is a building block on top of number one. And it's simply this. Make an empowered choice in light of what I see. Right? Am I willing to be real with myself? Verse 16, uh, James says, Don't be deceived, my dear brothers and sisters. One of the pastors that I follow online says, No one has lied to you and deceived you more than you. That's right. Let that sink in. And like, just think about how true that is, right? I think for a lot of us, it's got to be a wake-up call of some sense. Uh, one of those changes and one of those things that we really evaluate and we understand, we are at the root of some of our worst actions and thoughts. Ask yourself, are you following an idea that's just true for you? Or it's fine and it's okay because it's the way that you feel. I think a big danger we've all got to be aware of is interpreting our faith through our feelings in uh, a limited lens, right? We've got to interpret our feelings through faith. We've got to flip it upside down. In other words, to interpret the way that I feel through what Jesus has actually shown us in his actions or spoken in his own words. Is there something in your life that you feel like is actually okay for you, even though you know Jesus taught otherwise? I think James would look at you, he'd look at me straight in the eye, and he'd say with grace, don't be deceived, Mingo. Don't be deceived, my brothers and sisters. Make an empowered choice based off of what you see in the Word of God. It is the greatest truth that we have to stand on. And someday, at the end of all days, that truth is going to crash our party. And for some, it's going to be the greatest joy ever. And for others, it's going to be total dismay. And here's a great encouragement for us all in this process of growing our faith. Uh, that if you feel like you're alone or in solitude, it's really not true, right? Hebrews 12, 1 and 2 says, and let us run with perseverance the race marked out for us, fixing our eyes on Jesus, the pioneer and the perfecter of our faith. He's with us, and he's the perfecter of the faith we're developing, which takes us to the third way that we fight temptation, right? Trust God's goodness. Trust it. Verse 17, every good and perfect gift is from above, coming down from the Father of the heavenly lights, who does not change like shifting shadows. Going back to Father's Day, I can't help but think of this being the best model of a dad being shown right here. A good father calls us forward towards better ways of being, better ways of thinking, better ways of living, and he does it because of his love. His character is the motive. But you and I both know that we have to both participate in this process. That God is always going to lead. He's always going to invite. But we've got to be people that choose to respond, to actually follow in that invitation. So in what area of your life do you need to stop and begin following God's lead? Maybe it's been a while. Maybe this is the first time you've ever considered that God would be inviting you to follow him. Answering that simple and I think super profound question is really the first step in putting your faith into action. So there's one final way that we can resist temptation. And James says it like this, that when it comes to resisting temptation, remember that you have an invitation to walk in your purpose and identity. That's number four. So I... I just know this from working with Rick Warren in Purpose Driven that it's so much more fulfilling when we're living in our purpose and we know who we are, right? I'm a father, I'm a son, I'm a husband, I'm a follower of the Jesus way of life. That's my identity. And James wraps up, wraps up this idea with an encouragement uh, for the scattered believers in verse 18. He says, Of his own will, he brought us forth by the word of truth, that we should be a kind of first fruits uh, of his creatures. We, right, you and me, we live as witnesses and great grandsons and great daughters from those first inspired by the message of Jesus' half-brother James. 
So because of our purpose and our identity, we're actually set apart people who now live on mission to represent God's goodness to the world right here today. Our call is to be faithful, to resist temptation, right? It's about embodying our faith and participating in God's mission to love the world through the life that he's given you and the life that he's given me. I don't know where you find yourself today, but for those of you who maybe feel like you're stuck on this wheel of sin and brokenness, I want you to know that God sees you and he has mercy and grace on you, that his goodness is actually calling you forward I hope that you find a step forward. Maybe that you'd reach out to a community connected to this church and you take healthy steps moving forward. For those of you that feel like you're in a good place, I want to continue to encourage you to examine your life and see where you can continue to submit yourself to be more like Jesus, right? Ask, are you living out of that mission that Jesus has called you to? Are you serving others? Are you being generous? Are you loving those that God has put close to you? Last week, we introduced our theme verse for this series. And I want to take a look at it again before we close down the message. James 1.22 says, Don't merely listen to the word and so deceive yourselves. Do what it says. So let's do the work. Let's self-examine. Let's lean into the discomfort. Let's identify those places that lead to sin in our lives. Authentic faith, just as a reminder, it's not something that you just think or feel, or say. Authentic faith moves you to action. It moves me to action. So let's all move forward in our faith this week. If you're taking a step of faith in any way, shape, or form uh, after today's message, I'd love to encourage you to text NEW START to 67076. We'd love to encourage you. We'd love to celebrate you in this season. So as we wrap this up, let me pray for us, and then we'll call it a day. Jesus, Thank you so much for showing us that you're for us. Lord, thank you for reminding us that temptation is a battle that can be won. Lord, that our faith, when it's developed and it's strengthened, Lord, you use that to win the fight. Lord, I pray for so many of us that feel like we're in an endless wheel of temptation and sin and failure. Lord, would you rescue us? Lord, we're weak. Lord, we don't have what it takes to save ourselves. Lord, for some, it could be something super large. Maybe it's something really insignificant, Lord. Nonetheless, we still need you as a savior. Lord, would you meet us in this moment? Would you bring community close? Lord, would we be able to have a conversation Uh, that identifies those triggers in those weak spots, Lord, where we give in. Lord, would you be our strength? We love you. In your name I pray. Amen. We love you guys. We'll talk to you soon. I've searched the world But it couldn't fill me Man's empty prayers And treasures that fade Are never enough But you came along And put me back together And every desire now satisfied here in your love cause there's nothing oh there's nothing better than you there's nothing better than you oh there's nothing nothing is better than you I'm not afraid to show you my weakness, my failures and flaws. You've seen them all, you still call me free. Cause the God of the mountain 
Turn seas into highways. You're the 